help. We're getting ready for a brew. And um, you might be interested to see I'm retiring a little mash tun down there. I've had that for well ever <laughs> and it will be um, it will be going on eBay soon if anybody wants it. Uh, it's a bloody good little mash tun but some people will remember I got this from Ian Powell at Powell Brewing great big 80 litre mash tun which I'm going to start using and obviously I won't be using it to its full capacity but uh, oh there you go uh, even if I have a, a quite a shallow mash it's probably better than a long fin look at me in there don't I look don't I look skinny in there boys and girls um, yeah so yeah a short fat <laughs> short fat mash ton or short fat mash I could yeah you know, I can you know get 80 litres in there if I wanted to but you know maybe for a, a Baltic Porter or Imperial Russian maybe not Russian but an Imperial Porter or an Imperial Stout so this is a, a part of the upgrading moving up a stage um, and then my basic kit will be 100 litre so 100 litre capacity probably knocking out I had a four 70 litre brews at a time so I can fill a 50 litre keg and a corny keg so I'll be brewing it around 75 into the fermenters or not more likely um, I'll be doing split um, fermentations so I'll be getting probably about 60 in here and 20 that would be 80 wouldn't it brewing out bring out at 80 something like that anyway maybe 56 24 i don't know 21 22 haven't quite worked out yet it depends on how how those brews go but the idea will be in the 100 litre kettle over there um, will be to do a base so if I'm going to do it as, as an example I'm wibbling on it's because I'm still not back up to speed yet um, I'll be doing a base so if I'm doing a, a New England IPA I'll do a base New England IPA with a base dry hop I might do a dedicated whirlpool because I've got a spare one there I don't know yet and then split into the fermenters and have different dry hopping in the different fermenters. It's all, all a bit of an experiment. But anyway, yeah, um, I've been told not to do too much for a couple of weeks. So my not doing too much will probably be doing too much. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um, this has got a nice Fermo well in the back with a half inch BSP socket that you can screw your PT100 in. So, um, so what I did do is went out and bought some of these nice, are you gonna focus on that? That'd be nice if you did, and boys and girls know what we're talking about. Um, so that's 10 centimeter long probe, Cartman, and then that nice half inch BSP. Beautiful. So, uh, I wired a few up earlier, I won't show my abysmal soldering on there, uh, onto these standard um, three pin aviation sockets and plugs. What I have got in the back of down there, plugged it in and uh, this gave an error. Oh, that's odd. So I check the. Uh, it's difficult sometimes because you, know, you think red is going to be hot, and then these are going to be your zero ohms. So here's here's the way it works. Right, a PT one hundred. 
between your hot or your, your live this is the one with the resistance and this should be the resistance should be 100 ohms also between red and the second should be 100 ohms between these two should be zero ohms now actually i'll just let that carry on why free wires well pt100 is quite clever what it would do if supposing you had 100 meters of lead on here that would create a fair bit of resistance what it, what the um pid will then do is it will say well hang on if the resistance between these two come on focus on it it's not going to bother is it if the resistance between these two is say um 10 ohms then whatever reading i get from here from the live i need to subtract the 10 ohms because we know that's would it be 10 or would it be five i don't know probably five wouldn't it i don't know i have to think about that because that and that if that was five and that was five it would give you 10 there and back maybe something like that anyway so it knows to subtract that amount from the reading that it gets from the live from the the, the, the main so that's that's how it works so anyway i wired it all up assuming obviously that red was hot and that gave an error so i thought oh that's a bit weird so then i put it on a meter and um the way these were a pt100 the 100 it means at 100 ohms it's zero degree centigrade and then that's that's the base level from which it does its calculations and I was getting a thousand ohms across there between the red and yellow and the red and black I was getting a thousand ohms and then I looked at the label PT 1000 that's now here's the thing it's one of those strange things isn't it that um, uh that you find oh, it isn't on that one there's no label on that one um when you look at stuff sometimes your your brain doesn't see that extra zero or something and i had a look at the order and sure enough i've ordered pt 1000s there's the p i've ordered pt 1000s which of course aren't compatible with these inkbird pids obviously why would they be so i've now got if anyone wants them i've got six pt 1000s um and that just the pt 1000 is at 1000 or one kilo ohm is zero degrees it's just that won't accommodate for that it wants a pt 100 so at 100 ohms it knows it's zero degrees so that's that um, so yes moving up this will be the new that will be the new kit so all of this will pretty much go into storage or onto ebay or whatever and be soldered off the cp is good for whatever i need really i can even trigger this onto a free phase system if i need to i've got free phase going into the building um so i can very easily um use this to control if we ever did move up right up scale but this 100 litre kit will be the new kit uh i'm not going to be trying to lift sacks of grain in the next couple of days i'll get charlotte to do that so that and these will be the new kit the next stage up, I'm not sure what the next stage up will be when we do have the little brewery outside. If it's still daylight, I'll just show you something. Oh, Charlotte's locked the door when she's gone out. Never mind. She's locked me in so I don't escape. They're coming to take me away. <laughs> um, no, they're not. They should be, but they're not. Um, whoa, right. Uh, yeah, next stage up, don't know. Um, Andy over in Middlewich four priest brewing i think i've mentioned him once or 
12 times before, our Andy, who we met on the Middle Witch Arm. And actually, we met actually in, um, I can't remember where it was, little town, went to a nice little boozer. Um, lovely little boozer on the way before going to Middlewich and then across the Middlewich Arm and then up into Wales and then back and then coming back we met Andy again on the Middlewich Arm you know all this don't know why I'm telling you but um, he's got a spare mash ton so I might ask him what the capacity is I'll fire him an email off in a second so yeah that's it for this now on um, on Sunday uh, just trying to catch up a little bit slowly um, I haven't really been doing right much today, I have to be honest. In fact, uh, this is the first time um, I've really turned the phone on um, to uh, to make this uh, make this little video. So I'll edit this and bang it up just to let people know that things are still things are still doing what things should be doing, um, and then catch up on Instagram, Facebook, email, WhatsApp. Um, Twitter. Oh, or I might just turn the phone off again. There's always so many things, isn't there? Right, anyway, that's where we're at. It's looking good, isn't it? It look nicer when those those are up there. I'm hoping the stand's going to be strong enough in the wheels. It should be. I'm going to double check the spec on the wheels, but yeah. So there we go for Sunday the 13th. I hope everybody is happy and well. Um, you'll notice up in the top right hand corner, I've been putting. Um, just a little Ukrainian flag, flag and I've noticed over there I've still got the old USSR flag up <coughs> I'm going to keep it up there because it's nothing to do with what's going on at the moment what's going on at the moment it's just oh, no, yeah anyway um, right so till next time you take care cheers <laughs>